Uh, basically, just a quick agenda, we'll do a quick review, and then I'll do some um, to do list demonstrations with Word, Excel, and ClickUp, going from simple to more complex. <laughs> so, um, and just a reminder that what ta what is task management? It's, you know, that whole process of the life of a task, like you collect the tasks that you need to do, you review it, process it, do it, and then, you know, reprocess as new tasks come up and that kind of thing. So um, I'll show you what some of that looks like in the future examples, um, especially in ClickUp, maybe not in the others. But um, so, and we all pretty much do a little bit of this, whether we realize it or not. Um, and then here are some categories that we looked at last time. Their um, size, time estimate, want, money, the green, red, red and yellow, um, urgent and important point system. So I do use some of these in my, in my little universe of task management, but this is just a reminder of some of the categories we talked about last time. Uh, Another reminder is to keep your daily to-do list short. That could look like pretty much anything, but like if you do your, if you categorize your tasks by size, doing the one, three, five rule of one big, three, medium, five small task per day. Um, if you use a point system, assign um, the effort like points that it, it would take to get that task done, and then um, set a capacity for your day or your week to then, you know, um, limit yourself so you're not looking at a really crazy long to-do list every day. Or perhaps if you're used to working by time, estimate how much time a task would take and then set your time limit for the day. So those are just some ways to do that. Um, and then the other thing to, um, to do every day is to decide how you're going to start your day. So either eat that frog and do the big, ah, excuse me, I can't talk today. Um, either start your day with the big tasks and eat that frog first thing, or start your day by knocking out some of the small tasks. And either way is good. I kind of recommend a mix of either one. Um, I I'll also actually have like a couple of worksheets and resources for you. So if you want to scan this resource or this QR code, um, you can do it now or later. I'll put it back up later. Um, but it's just a PDF download for you with some of the um, information from the slides. So that should make it easy. You don't have to like try to write it all down. It, you can print it out or save it later. Okay. All right. First, we're going to look at um, Word as an example to-do list. And I just have it zoomed way out. Like there's several pages here with just um, like one day per page and just some tasks for each day, but I'm gonna zoom back out again because it's not really important what the tasks are. They're just example tasks for this. Um, but basically like one way to do a list if you want it to be digital, but you don't really wanna get very complex. You don't have time to make it complex. Maybe you wanna plan your week. So like this one has like the headings for every day of the week. So you can plan your week this way, or you can, maybe make a category for like priority level, you know, an urgent, like the urgent stuff needs to get done. Or maybe you will use the urgent important categories to help yourself figure out where, what to do. So I do have a tip at the top of page one. If you don't know this, it will change your life. <laughs> Working in a word, and uh, some of this functionality works in Google Docs as well. But let's say if I want um, to make, like let's say this, whatever this task is, I wanna make it the last task I do on Monday. I don't have to select it, cut it, paste it. I can just stick my cursor on that line, hold the um, alt and, is that the right one? Oops, I put the wrong shift, alt plus shift. So alt and shift, and I'm gonna hit the down arrow a few times, okay? So I, it just moves it down. Oh, yeah, I see it, it's a mind blowing. Now, if let's say you have some subcategories in here, like maybe you have within Monday, you've got like 
urgent as a category and maybe like high normal low. And now you wanna organize these tasks to be under. So I'm gonna move this one up with the up arrow. And if I hit right, it makes it a subtask. And you can like select multiples and put them where they need to go. So that it's a super fast way to um, organize a list in Word, like a simple list and rearrange things easily without needing to select cut paste and like move things around. And um, I could, you know, just keep hitting the down arrow and take this thing down to Tuesday. Like, you know, it'll go across pages and stuff. So that that's one um, way to use a list in Word. Pretty straightforward. Are there any questions or comments about this particular strategy? I guess, Josie, one question. Oh, how do you make sure that like everything's everything lines up? Like, for example, if you decide that, okay, actually this one is a sub subcategory, is there a way that you can regulate that? Yeah. Um, like, like let's say if you have um like client A versus client B as sub. Yeah. So in that case. Um, I would probably say like make a template that's empty of how you want to see it every day and then keep that empty bulleted list someplace and then copy it for the next day or something like just so you've got that empty one and reuse it because um, then as soon as you have it uh, existing in as many places as you want, like one from Monday through Friday, for example, each day, then you can add to it as you need to, right? Like, cause you've got that little empty template. Yeah. Does that think, help? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. So next we're going to look at Excel. So I'm curious out of the people on the call, how many of you like get anxiety just thinking about spreadsheets? Anybody? I see a couple nods, yes, okay. <laughs> um, anybody love spreadsheets? Couple? Depends on the spreadsheet, depends on the spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I love them and I know that there's, um... oh, and then yeah, somebody put in chat like, uh, about using Notion or Google Sheets. So, okay, simple spreadsheets, good. Yeah, planning for planning things, yeah, okay. So um, basically this is the same like tasks that we looked at in the Word document, but now there's more, multiple columns. So I've got the task in the far left column. I've got a category, uh, which is like what it's about. And so for this particular individual, like they they do, um, some university course teaching, they've got clients, they've got their own business. And so they have categories. So there's like financial, like creating professional development, advising, financial, client deliverable, just to give you some examples. Um, so that's one way for them to organize it and they can alphabetize it by sorting by that column. They can click up here and say like, oh heck, I just need to see my advising category. and get rid of everything else. So um, it, to do this, if you're wanting to try Excel, but you're not really sure how to go about it, select the row that has the headings. And on the home part of the ribbon, there's a sort and filter button. And the filter is, um, if you turn that on, that gives you this ability to like sort and like, sorry, not sort, to filter out all the things you don't wanna look at at that time. Um, there is a date column here. So that's like this, this person went through and said, okay, I want to do these things on these days. So it's just like some days that make sense to them. They decided to apply some priority. So normal, high, urgent, uh, low. Who is it for? So they have some personal items, things for their clients, 
things for their university teaching, things for their business, personal items. And then I think at the bottom, they've got a few volunteer work tasks because they also do some volunteer work on the side. So again, they can filter this thing up here and say, I only want to show my personal tasks because it's Saturday and I want to see what I got to do for my personal. So then they can just filter and see only those things. Then we've got the next column that is task size. So that's just um, the small, medium, and big. Small being something that takes like 15 minutes or less. Medium can take up to an hour, but no more than that. And big is like a bigger project, maybe multiple hours or multiple days. Um, again, you can sort that way, um, sort or filter. Um, and then the important urgent matrix. Again, we talked about that in mine and in a previous session where um, important and urgent is like the least good one, right? <laughs> it means you're in crisis mode, you're panicking, trying to get all those things done. Then there's um, the important and non-urgent, which is the planning mode and, um, and so on. So that's just another way to categorize it. So you could see like, and I actually use this, um, with an, like an exercise with my client. And I wanted to show her how many things were in the important and urgent uh, quadrant. And that's a lot, that's 22. So if you're like, oh God, what am I gonna do today? <laughs> and you've got 22 things that are in this category. It, it's not even anything else. It's just the urgent crisis mode tasks. It's not gonna feel very good. <laughs> So you don't wanna be working in crisis mode all the time. It's better to be working in the um, important and not urgent, which you know is it's okay to have a lot because then you can spread it out over time. And she's got like 17 of those. So um, there's that. And so uh, have any of you worked with pivot tables or pivot charts before in Excel? Let's see a couple of hands. Okay. so. Basically this function in Excel and, and Google Doc or Google Spreadsheets also does it to an extent, but it's a little clunky to me. I like working in Excel for this a little bit easier. It's easier for me in Excel, sorry. So essentially if you have data that is several columns across and you have several things about that item. So like the task, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six different, sets of information about that one task, but you want to visualize it differently because this is kind of like, what am I looking at here? Unless you filter it, unless you sort it, but maybe by date or by whatever. But if you want to see it in a, in a different way, you can create a pivot table. Please ask me if you would like help trying this out. I can point you to a resource about that. Um, but I've, I've went ahead and created a couple so this first one is a pivot about who. So basically the blue bars are tasks for my business. Yet yeah, orange is for my clients, gray is for personal, yellow is university and the light blue is volunteer work. So you can kind of see, I've got the dates across the bottom and then you see how many of each thing. So like April 19th, they've got five things for their clients, four things for their business, one thing for personal and three things for university. That's going to be a hectic day, right? Just looking at this. <laughs> and, and I love like having the table underneath so you can see the numbers in addition to the visual of the bars above it. Um, so let's take the same data and we're going to look at it in the urgent important matrix view. So that dark blue is important and urgent and holy cow, they're like, there's a lot of them and they're really front loaded because they're urgent, right? They're trying to knock them out as soon as possible, but that doesn't look like a stress-free day. The, on April 19th, 13 of them are important and urgent. <laughs> so the, like, yeah, it's a lot. I, you know, that's gonna be a crazy day. So um, just another way to visualize it. The next pivot table is by task size. So, you know, trying to follow that one, three, five rule where there's one big, three medium and five small, let's look at April 19th, that really crazy day. She's gonna have six big uh, tasks to do that day, one medium and six small. 
the biggest red flag is the number of big tasks because they're probably going to take all day just to do those, let alone the smaller ones that need to happen that day. Um, but there's other days that are a little bit better. Um, yeah, so there's that one. Then we've got a uh, priority. And I know during the last webinar, I talked about priority being something that changes over time. So just use it with caution. You know, something that is normal priority today might be urgent priority tomorrow. So, or maybe in a week, you know, so just to make sure you, you have a current check-in if you use the priority uh, labels or categories. Uh, so here she just pretty much used high and normal um, priority levels. So like April 19th, um, 10 of them are normal, three of them are high. And, you know, this was a very new activity to run through with this client where, you know, we did use multiple categories. So that urgent, important gives it more urgency than normal and high priority levels. <laughs> but yeah. Um, are there any questions about using Excel? I don't think so. Um, one And one way to use this is like, this is already like pre-populated, but a way to use it is just like type all your tasks in one column and then decide what categories you would want um, to so allow you to sort and filter um, as you work. And I did not include this, it did not occur to me until this moment, but it would also be good to have a status column. It is not started, it's in progress or it's completed. So that you know you can either hide the completed rows or cut them and paste them onto a different sheet or delete them, like whatever you want to do to get them off your current list of things to do. All right. If there's no other questions or comments about Excel, I'm ready to move on to ClickUp. I see everybody's ready. Okay. I'm a little biased. I use ClickUp every day. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. So uh, I will say I am in a paid account. So I have some features that um, may not be totally available to a free account. Um, but I'm going to hide this in a second, but the, the left-hand bar is like, these are workspaces and then folders and then lists underneath the folder. So um, I'm just going to basically be in like this fake account, fake business. It's like basically my business account, but I removed some names of clients and stuff like that from it. So I have, is it going to hide? Hmm. It wants to pretend to hide. That's new behavior to me. Okay. Never mind. I guess I can't hide it. It won't go, it won't go away. That's okay. Um, so let me make one adjustment to my screen to make it a little easier. Okay, that's right. I just wanted to show you a little bit more. So um, how is the font size here for you guys? Is it okay? All right. What if I zoom out once? Still okay? All right. Okay. So here, I do have a lot of folders and lists and things like I've got um, my business management one. It's like all the things I do for my business, um, finance related, social media related. And then I've got a couple folders that I share with clients. So um, if I have multiple lists and I wanna collaborate with a client on ClickUp, then I have a folder and I share that folder with them. Uh, and then I just have like, for more simple projects that don't require using ClickUp with the client, then I just have a client list folder and just have one list per client. And so my, my 
overall strategy is to just select my business space in ClickUp because it will show me everything that's under here, except for what I filter out. So I can filter location. So for just for example, I have, um, Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to go in there and play around, <laughs> but because I have it set a certain way, but basically like my social media planner, I've got things that are like scheduled for certain days. And like, I have deadlines built around that. Like, you know, ideally I would work on a social post now for something that's going to go out in two weeks. So like I have deadlines around that, but like, I don't want my social posts to show up in my to-do list because I have a system for that. Like every Monday I go in and work on social posts. So I don't need those things to show up in my regular list, right? Um, and I have a couple other places too, where like I, uh, I can show you later, but I use like a Gantt chart. It's really just a high level, here's what's happening. And I don't want those like deadlines to show up because they're not actually tasks. So I don't have them showing up, but um, I have it. so based on location in this entire space, if the assignee is me, so it's something assigned to me and not one of my clients, it shows up here. And then let's just say like, I'm just ready to look at things related to one of my clients. So I can select client A and it'll filter out everything else and it'll show me only the tasks for client A. And um, I have them for this particular view, I have them grouped by due date. So I can see things for today, tomorrow, Friday, for example. Um, I've got some columns across here that show the same thing for like, no matter who the task is for, but who it's assigned to, when it's due, priority level, time estimate for some things I do that. Um, I actually use the what they call sprint points, which is that point system we talked about. And I was using Fibonacci scale, but I decided to move it to a linear because one to five just is a little easier to like process quickly in the moment. Um, I'm not using the sprints thing. That's project management stuff. Um, I haven't given it a try yet. I do use task size. I'd like to always show the client like who or the company name to show me who it's for. The project is like, what kind of thing is it? Is it business administration, part of my business coaching assignments, communications, conferences, webinars, documents, files, like social media, you know, website. Cause then if I categorize it, then if I want to show later, like, um, let's say I'm not going to do by company, but I'm going to do by project. And I want to see everything related to website. Then I can see, oh, oh yeah, I have some stuff for client D related to website to, to do, you know, so for client A and B, I have a few different website related tasks. So if I'm in the zone for web design or web maintenance, then I can like just filter for something like that. and then remove it to just see the whole list. Uh, there is a calendar view. So you can view by month, which is not super helpful. And when you're looking, talking about this level of information, but if we're talking about just tasks for the week, I can see my week here. And my color coding is actually related to my small, medium and big task, right? So. The yellow is small, blue is medium, and the green is big. And remember that thing about the frog? My big tasks are green because frogs are green. So <laughs> um, just some, that's one way to see what your week looks like. Uh, and then because I use the point system, there's this feature and I believe it's only uh, available to like some level of like business account. So it's not for free. But it, if you're working with multiple team members and you want to see like, well, what is the, their workload who, or, you know, there's stuff coming down the pipeline, who can I assign it to and see where they're busy or not? I'm over 
like according to my list that we were looking at, I'm scheduled way over with my points for the next three days. So I need to like, after we finish up today, I'm going to go back to my list and say like, well, what can I possibly move to next week? Because I have plenty of room to next at next week, you know, um, but you can set your limit. So your weekly capacity is however many points um, and based on your effort level and how much energy, mental energy you have to spend every day kind of thing. So if you click on it, it will show you the tasks. So I've got a lot going on today <laughs> and tomorrow and the next day and less next week. <laughs> um, and then the last feature for this particular space that I absolutely love, and again, I believe it is part of the business, like a business or it's not the free plan, is a form capability. So if I'm meeting with a client, you got, or, you know, any, if you've worked with anybody, there's potential for them to be like, oh, can you do this thing? Oh, and that other thing and this other thing, like, because it's like, like a stream of consciousness of, because they're, they're thinking about X, Y, Z. So instead of trying to go like, add a new task, what's the due date, you know, like trying to do it in the list. Um, <clears throat> you want to just add it quickly. ClickUp has the ability to create a form where you set it up, like you create the list where all things are going to go and who it's assigned to. So I guess I'll show you the editing. Like it's going to go in my things to do list. It's going to be assigned to me. And then I decide which fields are going to be on the form. So I've got it bookmarked like on my browser and I've got one for like my personal too, because I've got a personal workspace and click up, but for my quick add work tasks, it's like, okay, well, what needs to be done? When is it need to be done by any details? I want to slap in there, any up um, attachments. I've got my project category. So like, is it website related or whatever? task size, big, medium, small, priority, and then the sprint points, so that point system you can um, select as well. And then that automatically moves it to the things to do list. And because I'm asking for all of those things, the, my custom fields, the, that information is gonna automatically also populate in the columns in the list. So it's really helpful for me. Um, just to give you a, a little quick look at some of the other um, ways to use ClickUp, it does not have to be a list, but it can. But for example, you can use the Kanban style, which is like the boards across the, the top. These are some social media posts, like really old ones when I had long hair, but like these are posted. <laughs> um, these are scheduled and like, so, I've got templates for it, content from the person I'm working with with social media, ideas, any drafts in progress, you know, and you can drag them across and that kind of thing. Like, so it's very collaborative if you want it to be. It can also be totally fine for you working by yourself. Um, and then let's see. Uh, I see people are laughing and I don't remember what. <laughs> oh. Because you're saying about, yeah, click up. And I'm not even doing it justice, you know. So it, it does way more than what I'm showing you guys today. Uh, and then here's something I thought you might be interested in. Um, it, how, how many of you have heard of Gantt charts? Two, okay. So a Gantt chart, it's my favorite thing ever. Basically you get to see a timeline. So across the top is like the year and the month, or you can make it like month and day or day and hour, depending on how far out or how close in you want to look. But here's like my client workload planner, because I don't want to have too many projects going at once. And I don't want to have like project wrap up dates to be all on the same day, for example. And some of my work is ongoing with people and some of like kind of retainer style where I do weekly work for them. And then some of them, it's like just a one-off project that takes a couple of weeks to finish. So I've got like my different clients over here 
and you can see like client B, client F, client B, like, you know, where they're sprinkled in. So that's, it's a way to like visualize your year and your time and that kind of thing. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Do you guys have any questions, things you'd want to know more about with ClickUp? Oh yeah, go ahead. You've got your hand up. Uh, I have two questions. So um, the first one, I was wondering what sprint sprint point points are, and like, is the goal to have as many sprint points or less sprint points? Okay. So yeah, I didn't I didn't get very much into it, um, and I touched on it a little bit in last week's session. But basically, it mostly has to do with um, project management, like the official project management strategy. And I'm not very well educated on that yet. So basically there's this idea of a sprint. So like, okay, this next sprint, it's going to be two weeks long and we want to get as much done as possible. And so there's a way to, to set limits within that sprint period of, um, that effort capacity. So if you say like you use numbers one through five, five is the most effort it takes to complete something. And one is the least amount of effort that, um, you know, you'll hopefully have a, an array of tasks that have multiple, like different effort levels, right? So like there's a, there's some like with one and some with three and some with five or four, whatever to mm -hmm. be, you know, easy and hard. But then um, the capacity then is just to, to keep it reasonable so that you're not like, and I, from what I understand, it comes from like software development, for example, like a video game, if they're going to change a video game character's outfit by coding, that's one level of effort versus giving them a new fighting move, you know, like, I don't know anything about that level of coding, but you know, the effort level is very different. So that that's kind of where this comes from. And okay. yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. And then I guess my second question would be, um, I think you, you show that quick add task. And I was wondering if there's a, um, if there was a feature in ClickUp similar to how the quick, um, quick add task is structured as uh, so a kind of like request form for clients that you send so that they can request tasks from you and it would instantly go into ClickUp. Yeah, so, so this feature is used that way by some small companies. I use it just for myself because it, it's I'm a one person company, but um, there are some companies that use it, like a use case would be maybe they're an IT uh, support group. And so they have a form that's like, tell me about your tech issue. Mm -hmm. It goes into a list and then, um, and <laughs> ClickUp does so much more than what I'm showing you, but there's certain things you can do, like if X, then Y. So if something comes in that is this category, assign it to, Kristen, if it's a different one, assigned it to archive. Like oh. you can make some things pretty complicated that way. Um, and then, and because it came in on the form, then it's in the ClickUp system. So everybody in the company that needs to see it can then act on it. So, um, and I, I can envision what you're saying. Cause I, I used to work in a group of admins, like for admin support in a, um, in a big company and uh, they they actually use like Google Form for something like that, like to have the things come in and be recorded. And um, but but yeah, ClickUp will do this. Uh, yeah, I, but it's not something that's on the free account, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then Phil, you have a question. So I've got a couple of quick points. First of all, yeah, um, um, sprints are definitely from what they call agile software development world. And so just to follow up on that, that's exactly what that's from. And it is related to the size of the task and how fast we're moving. And, you know, um, it used to be uh, something, the alternative to that was called waterfall. Just so you know, there you go. Um, the uh, uh, question, question on QuickUp and in other um, management techniques, Josie, on this stuff, which is tags, 
Um, do you apply tags to anything and how, how are tags like in your mind different than categories or, and I will add, first of all, um, we're, we're going to definitely reach out to ClickUp and have to have some affiliative, you know, kind of thing here for you because this is a huge uh, pitch for them. Uh, but, um, and I have found it to be incredibly, I fooled around with it, I should say, I haven't fooled around with it. I've done a deep dive and I've moved all of my task management into ClickUp now. Um, and uh, because I find it to be so fully featured and I am not paying yet for the, the paid version. I find the free version to be incredibly fully featured. Um, so, and I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of it, you know? So um, I, I don't think I'll ever run out of room. Um, so, you know, um, tags and categories and things like that. Just, do you have any recommendations? Um, because sometimes I feel like we get to be sort of controlled by the list creation and management rather than like actually doing things on the list, right? So I don't know what, you know, when do you stop sort of labeling and tagging and categorizing and actually start checking things off the list, right? I mean, that's sort of the challenge, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah we talked about routine and stuff. Um, right. But so tag, tags are interesting to me here because I'm not sure exactly how they're used because uh, I use categories. I make my own custom categories and I categorize something, whereas a tag is sort of just like built in and you just tag a a task with something I'm not sure what the difference is if you know yeah so the the tag I'm I know that there's more reasons to use them versus other things than I know but I I did start out because I hadn't figured out the custom fields early on so I was like oh I'm going to tag it for my business versus a client but then it's not as easy to separate them or or something it um it just it didn't quite work for what I was going for but like checking my PO box is an admin task, which technically I should move. I put it under comms. Maybe it should be under like business administration or whatever. Um, but I know, so I haven't used tags very thoroughly except in my social media planner where um, let's say, cause you know, it's possible to, to reuse social content when you make something. So if I say like, I want to, um, filter by tags and the tag is reuse then it'll show me like um things that i've posted in the past that i can totally reuse and make a copy of it or whatever that i want to do um based on that tag uh A bonus to the tags is that you can add as many tags as you want versus using the drop down. Um, sorry, the the drop down custom field for the like company name or whatever, uh, like what I was doing in the the overall list where it's like the company name or project or task size. All three of those are drop down custom fields, and so they're limited. You can only select one at a time. But if for some reason I'm like, oh, I need to, I don't know, put here's my team worker presentation, what I'm doing right now, right? Like I can say that it's related to, I don't know, data entry and a debrief and course development and have as many tags as I want on there. And then when you filter, it will come up. Um, but like, it's not as handy if you say like group by tags, because if you've got several things with multiple tags, then only things will be grouped together with the team worker presentation task that have the same all three tags, that kind of thing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I was wondering about tags and I think that's a big point is you can assign many tags to one item versus a custom, you know, uh, custom category let's say is only going to be one category per item in that sense yeah yeah and things that my like my things to do list if i were to go in here and did i did i get muted that was on me sorry i clicked the clicked the wrong mute i was trying to mute myself i muted you josie sorry okay. Okay. Uh, sorry to mute the present presenter. That's okay. I was just like, sorry. wait, what did I do? <laughs> okay. 
um, in the custom fields for my things to do list, the whole workspace, I have the task size because I want all of the things in there to have a task size associated. Um, sorry, workspace is the top level, my whole system. Space fields is like my JG business demo, my project and company. And then for this specific list, I need to remove this particular thing, but I, I had, I have custom field for like a stage of the website process, you know, um, so you, you can, you can set any custom fields like at the top, top level, because you know, it's going to apply to everything underneath. You can apply to just a space like, a, or a group and then, um, any list or folder as well. Like you can go all the way down. So maybe just that one list has that custom field, you know, and not everything else. Um, yeah, Arkai, you have a question? No, uh, actually, I raised it back when, when Phil, Phil and you were discussing about uh, tags and everything. Oh, yeah. I recently started using tags as well for the podcast that I'm working on. And because we have so many topics, we decided to put tags for each episode, but also each person and the different types of categories. So, like, me and Phil discussed about sales in our podcast episode. And but we went over different things. So to reset them when we do create the website and have like you know episodes by Phil, which are spread throughout the you know seasons and everything, they shouldn't be in one place and it's easier for me to manage like that. So that's one way I go about using tags, like subcategories and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Josie, I've got a question if yeah. you're good for it. So I've just received this question over message, but in regards to comparing different, uh, like different formats, there's ClickUp, there's Airtable, there's Notion, trying to find which one would work best for the individual. But uh, Christina is looking to streamline her client acquisition and onboarding process. Is there a way to automate it for those tasks? Ooh, that's a yes. And I don't know much about the automation part yet. Uh, I, so Phil feels like he's just scratched the surface. So do I. And, but, but I know more than Phil at this moment. So um, there's, so much to learn about ClickUp and different ways to use it. There are templates in here. So if you say like, I want a new list, then you can, um, I don't know, test. Okay, <laughs> Christine, I'll see what I could come up with here. But, um, <laughs> you can- We're all in it, it together. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, inherit statuses from whatever. And maybe I'm not looking in the right place. Anyway, I'm not going to get lost in here, but um, there, there are ways to do templates. So like you can create a CRM, like customer relation management kind of thing in here because they've got a template to get you started with some of the typical things that are ca captured in one. Um, and there's automations related to I think we like touched on it earlier, like if, if it meets certain category, then it, it gets assigned to someone or the next, um, or there's so many ways you can use templates in here. So if like a subtask gets completed, then it gets automatically moved to the next status or, or like something it's, but it's like beyond me. I can't like even describe it properly. Um, I, I will give a resource. There's um, this woman on uh, YouTube, and she has she happens to also um, offer a membership where they really get into the nitty gritty of ClickUp, and they don't like I'm showing you like here's my use case basically like how I use it, but how I use it is not necessarily going to work for how you want to use it. So she really approaches it as like let me show you the functions and how it works as a system. And then you can figure out what, what pieces of the system work for what you're trying to accomplish, as opposed to um, trying to sell you a template for a CRM that might not work for your business, right? Because it does, certain things don't apply for you within that template. 
but if she teaches you how to create a CRM that works for you, then you can, um, you know, do that from, from scratch on your own. So her name is Layla. I'll type it in the chat. At uh, process driven, and uh, I've watched several of her videos, and I've learned new things. And I mean, there's ways to do formulas similar to Excel in a column on a list if there's numbers in it which is crazy to me, but it's it, like, you know, there's all these functions that, um, oh yeah, Arkai knows who that is. Yeah, she, she's pretty good. <laughs> um, and then Phil, you have a question or comment? Uh, I just want to, um, uh, to first of all, uh, step in here. We're, we're running against a little time. Oh yeah. Uh, and I want to be conscious of, of everyone's time and especially yours, Josie, considering I saw your list of to-dos for today and tomorrow. And I'm like, wow, wait a minute. We better have to get it, Josie. Don't want the stress clock winding on you. So um, you've been incredibly generous with your time and, and this has been an incredible um, uh, session. Um, I, I, I will say um, on with regard to any of these tools um, to just echo, I've, I've used many of these in the past to manage teams from one of me through hundreds, including you know, um, technology professionals, help desks, things like that, all that stuff. So I think the most salient, one of the most salient points Joseph mentioned is just figuring out what of a system works for you and doing it, you know, and I think that process that you, you, you mentioned, you know, whether it's eat the frog first or whatever it is, 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 is incredible. So, um, does anyone else have any other, Josie, you have anything else to wrap up with or anything else to show? Oh, I just realized I didn't answer like some questions, but like the figuring out which platform, because I know there's like Asana, Trello and like, et cetera. Um, I ultimately went with ClickUp because of the Gantt chart availability, because some of the other ones don't offer it on a free account. And I, or maybe I wasn't really ready to like bite the bullet and pay for th that particular thing. So if um, selecting the right tool for you is basically which feature is most important to you and then does the platform have it, you know, to make your life easy. Um, in terms of routine, the thing I do is basically knock off the things that I need to do every day. I've got a morning routine task up in here that it might involve like, or it does involve some things around like checking my inbox and like writing out my goals every day, checking Slack, because I have a couple of different communities I'm in and like, um, checking in on my finances. But uh, one thing I will say is like using that form for inputting new tasks is great, but it only goes to one list. So if I do have a task that like comes to mind, it's for client A, I do manually go into my things to do list and move any tasks for client A into the client A list so that the client can see them as well. But so that's like my daily reminder in case there's anything there. Um, I think that those were the couple of questions I didn't answer yet. So, yeah. Does anyone else have any last questions for Josie before we wrap up? Okay. Um, well, Josie, uh, an incredible session today and last week. Um, thank you for your time.